And to the extent that the quality of a campaign still matters, Harris is simply closing out this one much stronger than Donald Trump. And on some level, he kind of seems to realize that. He was asked by Jonathan Carl today if he thought there was any way he could lose. Trump said in part, quote, I guess you could lose, can lose. I mean, that happens, right? I think I have a pretty substantial lead, but you could lose, bad things could happen. I mean, it's not exactly exuding massive confidence two days before an election, is it? And that air coming out of the balloon feeling is not just at the top of the campaign. Listen to what The Atlantic's Tim Elberta just wrote about Trump's own staffers. Quote, win or lose, they were done with the chaos of Donald Trump, even if the nation was not. I mean, first of all, I speak for many. I feel you, Trump staffers. Blink twice. Come on over. The water's fine over here. We'd welcome you in. I have to ask, though, is it really any wonder why morale is so low over there when their candidate is closing out his campaign with increasingly dark language? like this that he said at a rally earlier today in Pennsylvania. I have a piece of glass over here, and I don't have a piece of glass there. <laughs> and I have this piece of glass here, but all we have really over here is the fake news, right? <laughs> and to get me, somebody would have to shoot through the fake news. And I don't mind that so much. You didn't catch that there. Shooting at reporters, I don't mind that so much. Yikes. I mean, that is scary, terrible stuff. Now, at the very same rally, he also said this. We had the safest border in the history of our country the day that I left. I shouldn't have left. I mean, honestly, because we did so, we did so well. I shouldn't have left. Also, not surprising. Everyone should fully expect if Kamala Harris wins on Tuesday, he is going to challenge the outcome of this election. Not a surprise that he said that, but he did say it two days before the election day. And even in the moments when his closing message isn't dark, it is certainly confusing is the best way to describe it and very hard to follow. And when you watch this next moment, there are two things I want you to keep in mind. The first thing is that Donald Trump is speaking in North Carolina. The second is that the guy he clearly thinks is president at his rally is a Senate candidate in Pennsylvania. We have great Republicans running, and you have one of the best of all right here, David McCormick. You know that. Where's David? Is he around someplace? No, he's not around someplace, because David McCormick is, of course, running for Senate in a state hundreds of miles away, the state of Pennsylvania. And again, Trump was in North Carolina. So let's just to recap here. Just over the past few hours, Trump has been musing about violence against the press, saying that he shouldn't have left office, and mixing up what state he is speaking in, which is all quite the closing message. So I've said it before, and I will keep saying it. Nobody knows how this thing is going to turn out. But I think it is safe to say that one campaign does seem to be closing this thing out very strong, and one seems to be losing oxygen fast. Claire McCaskill is a former U.S. senator from Missouri. Michael Steele is the former RNC chairman and host of The Weekend here on MSNBC. And both of them join me now, and we're going to need you both caffeinated, hydrated, oh, all the things. Me. Trust me. I've got, a, I got a tent out it's, in the hallway. I'm yes. just going to be it's here. Our, we need you to be in your tent, Claire. Home. I, I may change clothes once. I don't know. Well, you can change clothes more than that. Whatever. But we, we just need you here, whatever <laughs> pair of clothes you're wearing. Okay. i got to start with this poll. Um, because... I'm gonna, I, don't, I don't think the Harris campaign thinks they're going to win Iowa. I'm not suggesting that. But Ann Seltzer is the gold standard. It does tell you a lot. To me, it told me that women are, are significantly for Harris, and including in a state like Iowa. We've seen that across the country. But also it's interesting because it's a demographic in that state, white voters, rural voters, that aren't the ones that typically people think she does well with. But, Claire, what did you think? Well, I, I think you're right. I think Harris has run an, a, a remarkable campaign. And I don't think people realize, you know, I know, Michael knows, it's hard. The enterprise is a difficult one. You have to raise all this money. You have to make sure you spend every dime of it in a certain amount of time. It has to be done efficiently. You have many different layers of staff. It is hard. And she's run a remarkable campaign. Here's what I think. I think it's great that everyone is hearing over and over again that it's tied. Because mm -hmm. you know what that does? 
scares people to vote. That motivates people to vote. And whose enthusiasm is higher and has been now for f over four weeks in almost every poll? Our side's enthusiasm is higher. And if you think it's tied and you have enthusiasm, you know what? You're going to show up and vote. The other thing about this poll that I thought that jumped off the page mm -hmm. at me is that she's the change candidate. Mm -hmm. And that's really what she's been trying to do. What motivates those independent voters more than anything is change. And those are the voters that are making up their mind. And I know the late deciders in the last week have been breaking her way. And honestly, if you watch the guy for more than 10 minutes, you know what you're reminded of, Jen? That you really don't like the guy. I was like, I was thinking so many things. Yeah, I'm no, wondering he's what just, you're saying. He just has <laughs> so many of, things. He's kind of a, 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 a self-centered, egotistical jerk. And for a lot of voters, that really matters because you know what the president is? They're in your living room for four years. They're at your kitchen table. They're at your barber shop. They're at the bar. They're on TV. They're a constant. And I think th there's something to this that people want to like the guy or the woman in this case that they're going to elect. She's smiling. She's competent. She oozes presidential poise. I, I feel good about it. Well, that's good. People are going to be happy to hear that from you, Claire, whatever outfit you may be wearing. Uh, <laughs> all right, Michael, I don't want to overread into this poll because polls are polls, right? Even yeah. Ann Seltzer polls. I do think there are a couple of good signs for her, including what we saw in the New York Times Siena poll today about late deciders really trending for her, including in the Sunbelt area, um, including in this poll, people, men over 65, um, were, were trending more for Harris than I think anyone would, would, would believe or suggest or have thought possible. What stuck out to you? And, and about, what about this last period, do you think, are good signs for her at this point in time? Look, what's, what stuck out to me is that you had a sitting vice president of the United States whose uh, presidential partner uh, decided to step down and thrust her into a presidential campaign for all of the expectations of running for president, actually having to do it with 107 days in front of you mm -hmm. is a whole different order of business. To then take a, a campaign that is already up and designed and running for one person, translate that to your operation, bring in your people, keep some people, do all that stuff. Meanwhile, the other party is sitting there just going, oh, okay, so we want these curtains over here, uh, and we're going to take out this department, and we're going to move in these people. For her to run the kind of campaign she has, that's what was reflected in that poll. And I don't think that's what people... Uh, thought would happen. And I've been saying, along with a small group of us for a long time now, that beneath the surface of all of this activity was, and I think you put your finger on it, Claire, this realization when it came down to who they wanted for president, at the end of the day, you want to like your president. At the end of the day, you want to have respect for your president. At the end of the day, you want to be able to tell your children about the president in a way other than explaining that he did something weird with a microphone. I'm not explaining that to my children. Right. Well, but some kids, some, people you, are. some kids you do. Yeah. I, re I remember what it was like for me back in the days of Bill Clinton to have to having explain what my sons heard on the radio on the car on the way into school. And I had to do that quick turn off thing. So that's still important 30 years later mm -hmm. for parents. And I, and I think what, what the vice president was able to do in a very creative way was to play an asymmetrical game that looked like a conventional approach. So she, she went out and conventionally, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to touch these groups, we're going to say these things. But the asymmetrical game was figuring out at every turn how she could throw her opponent off without him realizing. And that's why Donald Trump wanted her out of the race so bad. He did not want to have to deal with someone he didn't know how to deal with. And she was very good at making it hard for him to deal with her. That's what's reflected in that poll. And that's not lost in a lot of voters out there as well. So, I, you know, to your point, how this turns out in a couple of days is left up to voters. Thank God the founders designed it that way and not the way Donald Trump wants to design it, which is why you see all the machinations in places like Pennsylvania and Georgia, Arizona, elsewhere, where they're trying to, let's use the word, steal the election for him. And...
the voters are like, no, we're not going to play that game. That's what's in that poll. Yeah, that's a good way of thinking about it at this point in time. Let me ask you to just quickly before I let you go, sleep, hydrate, all the things. There is, I, I asked Nancy Pelosi about this and also Pete Buttigieg about this. I think we've talked about this too, about this group of perhaps uncaptured women in terms of whether they show up in polls or not, who may be voting for Trump, not telling their husbands, uh, maybe they're registered Republicans, maybe they're registered no affiliation. How will we know on election night if there is that group? What are you looking for to, to tell you that? Well, if we know on election night and she wins, then <laughs> right. we'll know it happened. Well, that's for sure. Yeah, but for that sure. particular group, which I think yeah, this they, is a yeah. big part of the story. I, it is a big part of the story. And they've not handled that part well. Because, the, the, you know, when you're in a hole, quit digging. And they were in a hole with women. And then they started saying, well, you can't not tell your husband who you're voting for. you got to be truth. You need to vote the way your husband wants you to vote. They actually started saying that stuff out loud. And I'm going... What, they think that's going to get more women to vote for him? And mm. then he says, I'm going to protect them whether they like it or not. And I go, do they think that's going to get more women? I mean, they do not know how. So what are they doing? They're going after the young male voter. And it's very obvious, you know, when they have, you know, Hulk Hogan ripping off his shirt, when they're playing the entry song as It's a Man's World or Macho Man, you can tell they're going after these young, low propensity male voters. But you know the problem with those young ma male pro low propensity, uh, they're low propensity voters. Which means they don't <laughs> vote a lot. <laughs> they are not motivated like the women are. Uh, women have passion and anger around their freedom being taken away and women dying in parking lots. And, and they're going to try to get the guy off the couch who's, you know, was excited about the release of Fortnite the other night.